What's up, everyone? So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the upcoming draft for the Green Bay Packers. The Packers currently hold the 15th overall pick, the highest pick they've had since 2019, where they selected Rashawn Gary. The Packers currently hold 10 total picks in the upcoming draft, including a fifth round compensatory pick, which they obtained from MVS signing with the Kansas City Chiefs, also a seventh round comp pick when Shannon Sullivan signed with the Vikings, totaling those 10 total draft picks for this upcoming draft. So the Green Bay Packers have a lot of draft capital, whether they wanted to package some of those together to move around in the draft or really add a lot of young talent to this roster to build for the future, whichever way they go with the whole Aaron Rodgers or Jordan Love situation. But regardless of which way the Green Bay Packers go, their draft needs remain the same. So in today's video, I'm going to go over the four biggest draft needs the Green Bay Packers have in 2023. And guys, if you are a new viewer to this channel and you enjoy everything Packers content from draft content to free agency, salary cap, everything in the off season, this is the channel to get all of that. So if you are new here, go down, click the subscribe button. It supports my channel a ton and also leave a like on the video. So to get this video started, I'm going to give an honorable mention to tackle. Now they're not in my top four, but they definitely would be number five. And rightfully so the Packers could go out day one of draft day, pick 15, and select a tackle like Peter Skaronsky. I'm not saying they couldn't do that because that really feels Packers-esque for them to go out and, and do that. And I wouldn't be really mad at it. The Packers need to add more depth on this offensive line, primarily at the tackle positions. They don't really have a true right tackle as of right now. Yes, Josh Nyman and Zach Tom and potentially Royce Newman could play the right tackle spot, even though we all don't want Royce Newman there. Uh, but they don't really have a true right tackle. Someone like Billy Turner they had in years past or Brian Bulaga. Josh Nyman's an upcoming free agent, although he is a restricted free agent, and I do see the Packers retaining him. Zach Tom can play anywhere, but is his best position at right tackle. It might be at one of the guard spots or even center. Uh, that's a whole nother topic we could go over. Potentially Zach Tom taking Josh Myers' job at center to get the best five guys out there. And then also David Bakhtiari, what's his future? He is under contract for the next two years at $28 million this year and $33 million next year. But will the Packers retain him at that number? So for number four on the biggest Packers draft needs in this 2023 draft, I have wide receiver. And they're simply not higher on this list because the other positions ahead of them are just way weaker than wide receiver. They do have a good base of young talent already in that wide receiver room. Christian Watson, we saw what he did late in the season. This guy could definitely turn into a star. We saw the promise of Romeo Dobbs didn't really return late in the season uh, after his high ankle sprain. Who knows if it was because of the ankle or whatnot, but I still have high, high hopes for Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson alike. And then also Samori Torre. We saw a little bit of flash from Samori Torre when he was on the field. I do believe that guy can be a good wide receiver on this team. And then even Bo Melton, who they signed late last year, didn't get any offensive snaps, but this guy definitely has talent. So they have four really young wide receivers that they could build off. But they also have two impending free agents, two guys that got a lot of snaps last year. Alan Lazard, basically the number one wide receiver on the offense. Is he going to come back? Not really sure if that's going to be the case. It didn't seem like he wanted to. Now, we may be misinterpreting that whole thing, and he definitely wants to come back to Green Bay. But I haven't seen anything that tells me that. And plus, will the Packers pay what Alan Lazard wants? He could probably get a little bit more money on the open market, which I do believe he will do. And he does deserve but I just don't think the Packers are going to uh, fish out a lot of money for someone like Alan Lazard. And then there's Randall Cobb, which I don't see the Packers retaining unless Aaron Rodgers makes it a thing. Okay, I'll come back, kind of holding the Packers hostage like he said he wouldn't, but I need these players on the team. That's the only case I see Randall Cobb coming back. I do love him. Randall Cobb, you know, so many memories with Randall Cobb, especially against the Bears, but I just don't really see him fitting in this wide receiver room, the future of this wide receiver room, whether it's Aaron Rodgers or Jordan Love. To be honest, I think they should just go younger, uh, potentially draft a true slot wide receiver, a young guy in the draft as well. And they just desperately also need a, a true number one wide receiver. The top wide receiver last year was Alan Lazard with 788 yards. That's the lowest top receiving yard on the Packers offense since 2003. Yes, 2003, Javon Walker had 716 yards. And that's wild to think about considering the day and age we are in the NFL and how much of a passing offensive game the NFL has became. Compared to 2003, when Javon Walker had 716 yards, you know, NFL was more run oriented and offense at that point. Now, would they find a true number one wide receiver in a rookie right away? Probably not. It's really hard to find the Justin Jefferson 
uh, and Jamar Chase is right away in the draft, and they automatically become a number one wide receiver. Now, could one of Quentin Johnson, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers become that guy? Sure, they could, but will they do that right away? You never know. That's kind of the thing with the draft. But nonetheless, they need to add talent to this wide receiver room, and they likely should draft multiple wide receivers in this draft. For number three on this list, I have the edge position. The lack of edge rush, I feel, really hurt this Packers defense late in the season. After Rashawn Gary went down, it just did not look good at all. If we go over the stats real quick, weeks one through eight when Rashawn Gary was playing, the Packers totaled 134 pressures and 20 sacks. Now weeks nine through 18 when Rashawn Gary, you know, tore his ACL, wasn't playing, given this is two more games. This is two more games than weeks one through eight. So weeks nine through 18, they totaled 110 pressures and 19 sacks, 24 less pressures and one less sack in two more games. Rashawn Gary's loss affected the defense heavily, in my opinion. Now, Kingsley and Igbari looked really promising, and I think this guy has a bright future on this defense, especially being a fifth-round draft pick. I feel like that was a steal last year the moment they ran that card up to the podium. I believe that guy was like second or third-round talent, so I really liked what I saw from Kingsley and Igbari, and I do believe he will be a starter um, opposite Rashawn Gary at, at some point in the future. Preston Smith was also pretty good. He had a decent year, but he is getting older. Just really, the Packers' edge room just lacked depth. After Rashawn Gary went down, you know, Kingsley and Igbari was thrown into the starting role when he was, you know, the kind of the depth guy when Rashawn Gary was there. And also when Rashawn Gary's gone, you know, he was taking all the double teams. Then, you know, they can double team Preston or Igbari, and then they basically have no pass rush, which is what happened late in the season. And you can always add pass rushers. You can never have enough. I say this all the time. Adding someone early like Lucas Van Ness, Nolan Smith, BJ Olajari, Andre Carter, Will McDonald, those are some early options that I think could really help this defense. For number two on this list, I have the tight end position. Now, let me get this straight. I do not value tight end over edge. If the Packers are picking at 15 and a premier edge rusher is sitting there ready for them to draft over someone like Michael Mayer, they should probably do that. But the Green Bay Packers literally have one tight end under contract in 2023 if you're not including the future deals to Gugamos and Allen, who are going to be camp bodies anyways. And that tight end is Josiah DeGuara, who is more of an H-back than a true tight end. So the Packers really have like no tight ends under contract for 2023. And that's why I have them above edge in this regard, because at least on edge, you still have Preston Smith and Enigbare and Rashawn Gary will return when that will be. We don't know, but tight end literally has no one. Mercedes Lewis is an impending free agent. Robert Tunyon's an impending free agent. I do believe they'll bring Mercedes Lewis back, uh, regardless if it's Aaron Rodgers or not. I think that guy has more gas in the tank, and we have saw that last year. He's such a pivotal part of this offense in terms of a blocking tight end, but he's not that threaten you in the passing game type of tight end that the Packers need, obviously. And overall, the Packers really just need to revamp that entire tight end room, regardless if it's Rodgers or Love. Someone like Michael Mayer or Dalton Kincaid, I think would help this offense a ton. I actually made a video on Michael Mayer yesterday. Mel Kuyper put out his first mock draft of the season and they had the Packers selecting uh, Michael Mayer there. So if you want to go watch that, just click the link right above. But the fact is the Green Bay Packers haven't had a 700 plus yard tight end since Jermichael Finley in 2011. They've really been missing that down the middle of the field, seam tight end that can threaten you vertically, you know, you can make contested catches, can be a mismatch monster against undersized defensive backs or slow linebackers. They really haven't had that guy. Sure, Robert Tunyon's 2020 campaign was really good, but I think he was schemed open a lot. A lot of his big plays and touchdowns, he was literally wide open. And I think that gives more credit to Matt LaFleur um, than Robert Tunyon. Do love Robert Tunyon. Uh, but is he going to be too expensive or or whatnot to bring back? We'll see. If it's a one-year proved deal, I'm cool with it. But nonetheless, even if they bring back Mercedes Lewis and Robert Tunyon, I still believe they need to draft a tight end here pretty early, uh, early on to the middle rounds to get a athletic tight end in the room. So last but certainly not least, number one on the biggest Packers draft need in 2023 is safety. Last year, I thought safety was a huge draft need. They didn't end up drafting one until the seventh round in Tariq Carpenter, who was basically a linebacker safety hybrid and drafted for the sole purpose of special teams, which he's good at. But they didn't address the safety depth until signing Rudy Ford, which was a great signing nonetheless. 
Uh, but now they have it even worse this offseason. I feel like safety has gotten worse since last season, and it was pretty bad last offseason. The only safety under contract that's played meaningful snaps on defense is Darnell Savage, and we saw what kind of year he had, and he's only on the roster because they accepted his fifth-year option last year, and that's at a whopping $7.9 million. So will he even stay on the roster at that number? Who knows, if they somehow find a trade suitor, they'd likely have to give up draft capital for them to take on Darnell Savage's contract. But how thin the safety room is, they might just have to deal with it and keep him on the roster. But nonetheless, I don't think Darnell Savage is a starting quality safety at this point. I love him. I'm a huge Darnell Savage supporter, but... You know, it was just a really rough last two years, and he just hasn't really improved. The others in the safety room include Tariq Carpenter, Ennis Gaines, Vernon Scott, and James Wiggins. None with real defensive snaps that could go out there and be a potential starter in 2023, in my opinion. Both of the Packers starting safeties from 2023, at least late in the year, are impending free agents with Adrian Amos and Rudy Ford. Now, I do believe they retain at least one of these guys, but that certainly does not mean that safety still isn't the biggest need on this team. The poor safety play in 2022, in my opinion, was the main reason why this defense wasn't good. Sure, the pass rush wasn't uh, that good after Rashawn Gary went down, but this safety play this year was absolutely putrid. Amos's grade dropped significantly from the previous year down to a 52.4 overall. We saw the two years prior a lot higher, especially in 2020. Savage was the same story, dropping down to a ugly 47.5 overall. And again, he had higher grades before bad last year even worse this year and as i said before rudy ford was a great addition brian gutekunst is doing a great job of finding these street free agents like rasul douglas devondre campbell rudy ford who turn out to be really good quality defenders and i do believe they need to retain rudy ford but they need to add more talent and depth regardless adding someone from this draft like brian branch who's a do-it-all safety high iq guy antonio johnson or even jammy robinson i think would do wonders for this defense so that about does it for the top four biggest draft needs for the green bay packers in 2023 i want to hear your thoughts down in the comments below do you like the order of these draft needs do you think one of these positions should be higher than the other or do you have a whole other position that wasn't included on this list let me know down in the comments below but i appreciate everyone watching this video again if you could leave a like it'll support my channel a ton but i'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching and as always go pack go